Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times. I'm Aditi Prasad. Manipur is burning. I use the present tense, although the state government insists that the situation has improved. But the facts on the ground speak a very different story. Now, we will talk about these facts. But first, let me introduce my guest today, Lieutenant General Konsam Himale Singh, an army veteran. He's a member of the consultative committee uh, at Manipur's uh, Naga Peace Talks panel. He's also the first three-star general from the Northeast. He has seen action in the Kargil War, served at the Siachen Glacier. In fact, he was honored with the Yudh Seva Medal in 2000 for command of unit during the Kargil War. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. So, I let me just drive stri uh, straight in. Uh, let's look at the facts on the table. Uh, there is an ongoing curfew, uh, a sizable deployment of security and defense forces, um, including reserve battalions, Manipur rifles, commandos. There are 114 companies of CAPF and 184 columns of the Indian Army that are deployed in Manipur right now. Uh, there are 355 relief camps at last count, and the violence is not seeing any end. You are in Imphal, sir. You are in Manipur right now. Please tell us what the situation on the ground is. Aditi, first, uh, thank you very much for inviting me here. The situation here continues to be similar to what happened 60 days back on from 3rd of May. Today is 3rd of July. The situation remains tense, emotionally charged, and the killings continue. Uh, though it has been re reduced to a considerable extent. And you are right about the various uh, camps, which are people are yet to go back to their villages and places. And there are most worryingly, there are thousands, at least five to 8,000 weapons in circulation amongst the people, whether they are militants or they are uh, armed, armed guards, whatever you call it, it is a dangerous situation right now. You know, Manipur, sir, has been, you know, you're saying the situation is dangerous right now, but this has been the situation for the last two months where writers are running havoc on the streets. The state appears to have no control over what is happening on the streets. Is this a complete breakdown of law and order? Would you agree with that? Uh, there is a, I mean, a, a vertical split in the governance issues because of this ethnic conflict. In fact, it is beyond ethnic conflict. It is a dimension where there are certain external issues here, the internal conflict here, then the ethnic conflict, then plus the, the, uh, the uh, uh, many dimensions of violence I mean, starting from social uh, dimensions, the military, uh, the militant activities. So it is a combined factor of so many uh, uh, dimensions of violence. Therefore, uh, I really um, can't say a complete breakdown because in the respective areas of where the violence has affected, like, for example, Imphal, uh, there is reasonable, uh, you know, um, activities of daily life. In, in, in uh, and is the, the capital city. Yeah, but sir, Imphal is the capital city, yeah. so one expected one expects yeah. a certain amount of. Yeah. yeah, but what about the rest of Manipur? It seems to be on the boil. Yeah. Yes, the areas which are affected, particularly in the peripheries of the valley, which are adjoining the hill areas, particularly dominated by the uh, Kuki tribes, there the situation is of much concern. But having said that, let me also tell you, as you said earlier, that you know, no internet, no educational uh, institution open fully, then highways blocked, and uh, various uh, normal, uh, normal uh, activities of governance is not there. So therefore, it's a, a much uh, cause for concern uh, that I totally agree with you. 
you know, do you believe that the Manipur High Court's order telling the state government to check if the Maitis can be categorized uh, under the scheduled tribes, which is, of course, which is of course the trigger of this entire thing, uh, do you believe that to be the only reason for what we are seeing today? No, 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 no not certainly. Uh, the High Court judgment might have been one of the few triggers but by no stretch of imagination were the cause for this violence. The cause for violence lie elsewhere. The cause of the violence is uh, legacy issues of socio-economic issues, political issues, and you know, whenever there is a um, ethnic conflict of this magnitude, one can one can actually um, uh, relate to the fear of the future. Fear of the future of each ethnic ethnicity is the main uh, kind of a cause for this, which have been building up for many, many years. I mean, uh, it's a long story, at least uh, 150 year old uh, legacy issues. But more importantly, in today's modern times, what happens is people are, people of all communities are aspirational in nature. So uh, once they find that you know, uh, their aspirations for the future of their group are threatened, real or imaginary, that is the time such conflicts uh, come into play. So therefore, uh, issues like you know, uh, illegal migrations, issues like drug and poppy uh, uh, culture, which has come into the state, issues like forest rights, and uh, various such uh, issues are have been active you know uh, in the state for a long time at the same time i would also say that you know the governance issues deficit of governance over a period of time all this contributed to the you know uh, uh, to, to the uh, to the fire though it was uh, kept uh, under the carpet for a long time and the high court judgment and activities against that i think were a trigger. I agree with you that, but uh, uh, by no stretch of imagination, these were the causes for the conflict. Yeah, for for the prolonged thing. But have have we seen you? You're saying these issues are 150 years old, but we've not seen this kind of a continued violence for such a long time in recent times. Uh, see, um, let me go back uh, in a little in time. We have had. Uh, many kind of uh, conflicts here in the recent parts. I will just quote, quote about uh, last 30, 40 years. We had uh, the conflict between the Naga group and the Kuki groups during 1992-93, which lasted for over uh, three, uh, uh, approximately three years. Plus, my, you know, in, in fact, people say it continued for about four years. So it has been there. Similarly, we have had uh, ethnic conflicts of uh, between the Kukis and the Paite. Paite is basically a Kuki group now. In this, uh, they are also involved in uh, in this conflict now. So they also had it continued for over seven eight months. So it is not new in the region, particularly in the northeast India, where the uh, the there are so many tribal groups more than 270 ethnic groups so it has been there long uh, this thing but i totally agree you agree with you that today in today's modern world we cannot have a situation where everything is blocked and uh, highways are blocked schools are closed internet is not there all governance activities have come to a near standstill this cannot go on for uh, so long but clearly it is going on the army is there in full force right now it's a complete breakdown of law and order within the state it's a complete failure of the state government to rein in the elements but also um, i'm going to talk to you about the challenges being faced by the army because we saw visuals uh, in the recent past of army itself putting out visuals of women uh, sort of su uh, support, supporting these uh, some of these insurgents and actually stopping the army guys on their tracks, uh, you know, standing in front of them and, and start, sort of stopping their advance. But, ha but what about the 
people who are actually involved in this you know the kind of weapons that one is seeing there there there, there seems to be there are full fledged automatic weapons well trained insurgents uh, from both sides i would say their strategy they are using mortars they are using drones they are using sniper rifles how you know where are they who are these people where are they getting all these arms and ammunition from it's a, a very um, very good question i must say where are where are these weapons coming from that is the first issue which has a external dimension you know we have a very very unstable neighborhood in myanmar and uh, uh, we have uh, other neighbors which are inimical inimical to india so these weapon systems are are coming from outside i suspect that it is through um, uh, through elements associated with uh, even china and uh, there are also weapons which have been looted or you know uh, forcefully taken away from the police armories of the state as well so all these combined make a very very uh, dangerous cocktail here you said about the deployment of the army and the other uh, you know central armed police forces as well as the state police i totally agree with you but i must also say that they are operating under very extremely difficult environment they are operating against their own people and then we have people who are emotionally charged sometimes they even criticize the security forces sometimes they suspect or rather suspicions or rumors that you know security forces are siding with one group or the other all these are false so there is a extremely high level of distrust amongst all many stakeholders here that is one of the reason why these issues are continuing even today because in our society here in in a, in a tribal society actually the uh, distrust is very very high and when the emotions are high the rumors go wrong all that i can say is that all the agencies are trying very hard we are very trying hard to con control the situation to calm down to bring people to the government is trying the central government is trying but we are yet to see a significant improvement in the situation and i'm sure i'm sure that uh, the security forces will act far more tougher in the coming days because this situation cannot be allowed to prolong my question to you sir is why are why have we let it prolong for this much time they the the center has had intervened almost a month ago and the army has been there the uh, the crpf has been there from day one uh, when the first uh, uh, you know uh, uh, violence broke out in the first week itself not day one but why have they not been able to contain these people we talked about them having very sophisticated arms you're saying that the arms have possibly come from some have come from the neighboring countries some of these guys have looted but it cannot be such a sustained i mean why has the army not been able to quell it so far you being an army man i put this question to you because the army is trained to fight and uh, conquer in these situations uh many places in the area affected area are not under armed forces special power act as of today having said that one can say that they can also act under crpc you know as aid to civil authorities so all that is going on the uh, the terrain the the terrain the geography here is little different there are jungles there are hills and the people hiding places and then the area is very difficult there are people civilians even sometimes blocking the uh, security forces uh, movement and and uh, you cannot distinguish between a militant or a, a volunteer or a, a you know innocent civilian that is what the situation is right now and uh, the security forces are extremely careful very extremely careful that in in uh, controlling these people 
they should not create you know they should not create more casualties for the unarmed people or innocent people that is the main concern but yes the situation has um, been prolonged for that i think people have to be answerable that will be brought out why this has been uh, allowed to prolong for a long time but the situation here is not the same as in other parts of the country where you uh, uh, you know you have a, a communal class and then it is brought uh, like gujarat it was brought under control within 5 days or something here it's a different dimension it is it is a totally different dimension where the you know the tribal loyalties come into play then the geography is there then history is there all is combined socio it's a it's a very difficult situation is not a easy job and i only hope that it doesn't turn into you know full scale counter insurgency operations in the coming days because that's not uh, then you know uh, that will be a dangerous situation for the entire uh, region i'll say i am also worried the entire country i would say because that's that's a, that's a very that's a very uh, strong statement that you just made that this might turn into a, a insurgency situation which the government uh, will have to handle uh, at a at a different level uh, why do you think that is a big fear uh, can you just repeat your last line because uh, I mean, why do you think why do you think that is a fear uh, uh why okay. do you think that the is yeah 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 uh, uh, you know i mentioned a bit about it in the in the uh, uh, in the in uh, uh, about 5 minutes back see the hmm. dimensions here are across the border you know we have a situation where myanmar is fighting so called you know uh, democratic uh, people pdf we call you know people's democratic front and uh, groups here which are based in northeast india but manipur in particular they are uh, they are known to have aligned with the powers even in myanmar and another dimension i wish to uh, say is that you know like um, let's say um, uh, some cookie group you know we are seeing that literature of you know uh, chin cookie chins are in uh, myanmar so you know talking about uh, uh, though it is as i said aspirational kind of a thing and the chin national army is uh, involved in myanmar and the chin national army is also uh, you know known to be affiliated or some kind of a relationship between the kuki uh, uh, the kuki militants here similarly even the maiti the you know maiti militant groups are also known to be aligned with uh, some other group in myanmar so it's a mess here and you know that naga talks are going on for a, yeah. you know some kind of a, some kind of a, a settlement uh, which is pending and you have a situation where um, um, some elements in mizoram or even in assam they have you know they have expressed their support or opposition to various uh, the happenings here so it is a dimension which is little bigger than you know just the uh, ethnic conflict of two uh, elements of two communities in the state of manipur that is the reason why i said that is little larger in scope and uh, it can turn into a, a little serious national security um, issue uh, in this part of the country what would you advise the center to do given that the state government has com- has been completely unable to uh, sort of stop whatever is happening uh, your voice is again breaking can you just repeat i'm saying what would you advise the central government to do given that the there is a complete breakdown of law and order at the state level uh, first of all we must first of all the the security forces are already at it but i would suggest that we disarm the weapons collect these weapons by force if necessary as 
much as possible because we cannot have a situation here, you know, with uh, so many thousands of weapons in circle. That is the first thing to my mind. The second is that control. Control, there are only, you know, the, the, uh, the flash points are not everywhere. Flash points are in specific uh, seven or eight locations. That is where the maximum uh, effort should be put to ensure that these clashes do not take place in these seven to eight flash points. That is the second. Hmm. This is the immediate kind of firefighting. Beyond that, there are many other uh, issues which have to be, we have to look at. That is already being done uh, when uh, Mr. Amit Shahji visited Manipur, you know, things like investigations, inquiries, the relocation of the, you know, displaced people. So many people are there uh, displaced. Then uh, uh, at least, you know, make the governance start off some kind of ways and make various laws and rules to address the uh, the issues raised by each of these communities for that we formed a peace committee of which i, I was also uh, uh, made a part of it because of uh, some conditions put by one group or the other so efforts are uh, on uh, but we have to do much more I suggest that it has to be this fight. I think it has to be the father figure uh, who have to do it. It is in the, uh, I think the center has, I will request the center to do a little more politically uh, so that people are made or at least forced to sit together. That is something that uh, uh, I think we have to do uh, because I think uh, letting it go on like this, it can only finish, it can only get over when people are tired. I mean, there will be a very costly affair. That will be a very costly affair. You know, I was reading one of your pieces, sir, and, uh, uh, you know, you have very categor categorically said that the lingering effect of this current conflict will be felt for many years to come. Uh, this is not some, this is not the usual a uh, kind of uh, ethnic conflict that happens uh, time to time from in various northeastern states, you know. But uh, this one is is uh, needs to be needs to be looked at uh, in that sense. Why do you think? Um, what's the effect on the psyche that's going to sort of on the young generation? What's what do you think is going to be the long term impact of this? I don't know when they'll be able to first stop it, but. Once, once they stop it and once once the rehabilitation and reconstruction is done, uh, beyond that, what are the lingering effects you're talking about on the site? Your your voice is uh, breaking. Can you just repeat, please? I'm sorry. I You said I, you, your voice no was breaking. Lingering, no problem. So I think there's a problem at the internet of the internet connection at, at your end. But I will repeat myself. Uh, I'm saying that what is the lingering? I was reading one of your pieces. You said you said that this conflict is going to have a lingering effect. What's the lingering effect on the psyche, uh, the long-term impact of this current conflict, according to you? Uh, yeah, I did write somewhere. Uh, first, I I would like to I would like to first I would like to believe that you know it should not uh, linger for uh, long. But the realities on ground, uh, to me, appears uh, that it will going to linger for far more because the uh, because the uh, the aspirations of the people, uh, you know, involved, they're totally opposite to uh, each other's beliefs and uh, aspirations. Right now, what is happening? You know, there is no the meeting point is uh, very wide. Is I don't see it. Um, we may be able to control the violence, but long term, long term for that, we have to have long term uh, solutions and the long term solutions are not confined, confined to these two communities. It will be for many communities here. There are over 35 communities and also the neighboring states. Which will be a very, very big challenge for the government to actually meet the aspirations of all these groups, there is difference in 
uh, multiple levels, multiple levels in their uh, approach to governance, multiple levels of uh, their rights and privileges, and also what they consider as their future, uh, you know, future uh, uh, for their future generations. So therefore, I don't see it um, coming of um, where all this can meet somewhere very soon, unless there is a major shakeup in the administrative setup, major shakeup in uh, kind in kind of policy issues. All this, keeping in mind the national security uh, perspective, I mean that is that should be the first priority. That should be the first priority. So, uh, so thank you for joining us and thank you for giving us the, your thoughts on this because there's something very, very serious that that sir pointed out and that is that this might become this current conflict might result and might become uh, a national security issue. The kind of insurgency that had almost vanished and for it to make a comeback uh, into the Northeast and uh, with this particular issue. Uh, it's been going on for two, 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 almost two months now. And uh, uh, we should have already put an end to it. The army is there in full force. The state government has effectively collapsed. But uh, uh, we look forward to something uh, coming out as uh, Lieutenant General Kosam Himalaya Singh has just pointed out to us that over the next several days, he does expect uh, more on the ground happening so that this current conflict can be put to bed and the rehabilitation and re reconstruction can begin. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you for your uh, time. Thank you, viewers, for watching this broadcast. We will keep coming back to you with more. Stay tuned to Hindustan Times.